Hello animators, riggers, blender folks! I'm Xenomes and welcome or welcome back to this tutorial series, Rigs of the Trade. And this time we will address in organic rigging one thing that should be perhaps a watershed and is a mystery for a lot of people, including myself, a few weeks or days ago. Of course, we're talking about the complex joint between the thigh bone and the hips bone on the pelvis region, which contains the pivot point for the thigh bone, which is here, and which usually is parented, offset, disconnected to the hips bone or torso bone or spine bone, something at the bottom end of the spine. Yeah, sometimes they use, uh, there's a method that uses a helper bone here. But we're not using this, we're doing something different. So we don't need that helper bone. We are using other four helper bones here to have the job done. Because what we're gonna try to achieve here is just to emulate the corrective shape keys method, which is very, very powerful. And we're gonna try to substitute uh, corrective shape keys using a helper, a helper bone system or rig. But the corrective shape keys method is not easily discarded because what it allows us the rigger to do. Hold on, I'm gonna activate the display on edit mode and on cage so that I can have this craziness, which is very useful by the way sometimes. This is not shape keys, I'm just demonstrating. Uh, the cool stuff about corrective shape keys method is that it gives you the rigger complete control. Well, maybe not complete, but a very directive, external, exact input on the vertices on a deforming mesh over time. So at this moment, I want this vertice to be here. It gives a sculptural approach, right, to the rigger. Sculptor in time. I, I love this notion. And th this is how I feel about rigging characters in Blender. However, if we try to achieve the sculptural results in, for rigging in uh, depending solely on the armature deformations, such as bones and bone constraints and wave painting, then we are actually uh, constraining ourselves to the limitations of the algorithm, the skinning algorithms actually, because there are many of them, maybe a few of them. I know that Blender probably uses uh, at least those three, I think. I actually linked this academic work in the video description as well as another one which I found interesting on the subject of organic rigging because ultimately it was thanks to those researches that I was able to come up with better experimentations on this kind of problematic which led me to finally a relatively simple solution with helper bones for this kind of rig on a complex joint on an organic character. Just get a basic idea on those algorithms. For example, in here, uh, what is running on those two models is dual quaternion skinning. As I've seen in a tutorial that appears in a note, when you have this option, preserve volume checked for an armature modifier, this is deform or rotation interpolation with quaternions. And if I uncheck it, then I turn into linear blend skinning mode for all the wave painting on the mesh. This one has it checked, so it's dual quaternion skinning. And this one, unchecked, has got linear blend skinning. It's uh, mostly the same thing. The problems will be mostly the same. And uh, without the helper bone systems, this everything here would be disastrous. Yes, let's let's do it. Let's let's make it real. Uh, let me show you what will happen if we just delete everything here. And maybe you'll be familiar with this. So let's go. Yeah, it's not horrible. Yeah, it's it, but it's really not very interesting.
So you see, it doesn't matter the algorithm, it is not good enough in most situations when we want uh, some kind of uh, more expressive and sculptural shapes in motion, right? It's just not enough. So we need additional solutions to our rigs when we are engaging on organic rigging for certain types of characters and animations. As for spline skinning, I believe that in Blender it would be when you use spline IK bone constraint with a curve object, right? But then I don't have this as a project for this tutorial, so this will be a project in which we are gonna achieve a relatively decent and interesting organic deformation using dual quaternion skinning with helper bones rig. So no corrective shape keys at all, no other input, no other modifiers, just a helper bones rig. And well, of course, subdivision surface maybe at level one, but this is this will not save us, right, from the horrid deformations or limitations on the algorithm. So we need uh, to work around this. So one thing that is fundamental when we are using those armature deformations and including uh, helper bones that are deforming bones is that if you check attentiously those um, areas what you might notice is that the bones, the helper bones, they are not rotating. They are just changing position, so changing location. Why is that? Well, it's because it's precisely the rotation of a deforming bone that will tend to cause horrid deformations on, on a mesh. And so when we try to add the more deforming bones to solve a previous horrid deformation and those extra bones they rotate also essentially we are just adding more of the same problem that we've originally had created because of the skinning algorithm of course so it's like fighting fire with fire, right? This is why I believe sometimes on some rigs we see some sort of stairs on the mesh. This is because multiple bones, deforming bones, are having a rotational input. Even if the rotations are minimal, sometimes that's enough to create some unwilling artifacts. So on that uh, very simplistic and analytic experiment, I was trying to imagine this is a thigh bone rotating from more or less a side view. The wave painting is pretty simple, it's all red basically. The edge loop at the bottom of the red face loop is the limit in which there was wave painting and those vertices, you see how far they go, right, by following the rotation of the bone. They are just doing their job but this is what is very hard to control on a rig. The, I call that the danger zone, the danger edge loop. There are no smoothing wave painting there, it's like just one or zero weights because uh, there are no sharing waves, it's just the, the thigh bone have uh, entire influence on that, on that mesh part. Even if there were more deforming bones sharing waves, unless they were very smart, placed, developed helper bones, the result would be not the same, but it would be just like that. The leg kind of interpenetrates into the, the torso. Doesn't matter from front bending, back bending, or even side bending of the leg, uh, the same pattern will occur because there, it is a very strong influence around the pivot point and that mesh is particularly in a bad spot all these deformations must be countered or suppressed somehow essentially we are against this kind of stuff when we are dealing uh, directly with this skinning algorithms the last thing we need to address before we start uh, recreating this rig let me show you how i made those helper bones uh, work. 
They are basically parented to the hips bone, just as the thigh bone. They just have a single bone constraint, which is the transformation bone constraint, which is a very large bone constraint. Actually, it, it works like a driver, so this could be achieved perfectly only with drivers. I can avoid drivers, I prefer whenever I can use bone constraints. And so those bone constraints, a single one for each of those bones, yeah, there are some differences. Each of them has a target, which is the thigh bone. So they are targeting the rotation of the thigh bone. So there are those three bones here. They are targeting the X axis rotation of the thigh bone, which is bending forwards, bending backwards while this, the side bone, is focusing on the rotation of, of the z-axis. So it's uh, bending sideways. To use these bone constraints, or probably also the driver's method, we need to understand what is the positive and negative rotation of the type bone. So for example, here if I if I try to check here, I don't I, in the transfer panel. I do not see the x-axis changing, and it will be better if I just hide the uh, uh, disable the I key bone constraint so that I can FK rotate this directly. So let's make an x-axis rotation. So this is a positive. It's in radians, not in degrees. And this is the negative one. So bending forwards in this case is a positive x rotation and bending backwards it's negative x rotation. And for the z axis, which is here, so it's uh, bending sideways, the, um, if I do this, rotate on the y axis, the z axis, sorry, this is a positive rotation and this is negative rotation. So I'm not using a driver, uh, a bone constraint. I'm not using a helper bone here for the for this this uh, particular transformation. Let's take, for example, to start with the bent front. This is the the first one. There's another one, but uh, let's take this this first one. I check what it's going there. So there's the rotation, all right, for the x axis on the thigh bone. And we're taking this transformation and we are uh, transforming it to a location transformation for the owner bone. So the helper bone is having a location transformed and it's moving on a maximum of negative 4.1 on the uh, negative y axis. So it's taking the source of x, the source of x is it's that, and it's uh, moving negative y. This is why it goes there. I could zero this out, and so it won't move on the well, it's, oh, I, of course, I, I changed this for the z-axis. So, let's do this way. Okay, so now you see this is not too complicated, but it's, it's a bit confusing, right? But with some tests, we, we can navigate into that. And so, there's also this minimum, and, and it, this can get a bit confused. So, try to keep it simple. And I put all x because the source for this transformation on location is always based on the x axis rotation. And so this has the same things here, a bit differences here. The back, instead of uh, maximum 180 degrees, it has minimum negative 180 degrees. So that makes sense, right? Start on zero degrees rest pose, more or less, and then goes up there. 